Hello, this is Celeste here from Aguascalientes, and you're watching Teacher Learning Task with Pili Herrera and Benjamin Stewart. broadcasting this as a recorded version uh, tomorrow on Saturday. Uh, my name is Benjamin Stewart and uh, we're here at the uh, beautiful campus of uh, the Universidad Autónoma de Aguascalientes. And my name is Piri Herrera, as always, uh, greeting you and enjoying to have these conversations about education here in Teacher Learning Cast. As always, we invite you to join, to leave your comments, to contact us through our different media. Remember, uh, my personal website is uh, homerstudelson.weeksite.com dash Piri Herrera, H-A. And Benjamin Stewart. You can reach me at my website at benjaminlstewart.wordpress.com. And we are hoping that you can uh, tag along in the live transmission Saturday morning at 15 or during the on-demand videos, you can send us whatever you want us to talk about. And uh, today we are rushing a little bit in the, in the entrance. We've been discussing yeah. A lot of things during uh, the, the, the recent talks, we talk about students, we talk about learning, and uh, many of the aspects sometimes we have as examples come from real life situations with them actually, right, man? Yeah. And that's why today, as you can see since the very beginning, and that's why we're rushing, <laughs> we have a special guest today. I want to introduce to everybody our dearest Celeste Pro. Hi, nice to meet you. And Diana Macias. Hi, everybody. There, there are uh, some of our students at the BA in English Language Teaching at the Universidad Autónoma de Aguascalientes. Dr. Dr. Benjamin Stewart uh, is a titular teacher, uh, main teacher there. Um, and myself, uh, he is working in the linguistic area and I work in the practical area. And uh, the girls are second semester students, right? And today we want to discuss with them something a little bit practical and example. Uh, of what actually happens in in the BA, but not as an example of the BA, as an example of teachers' information, which are just fresh teachers in pre-service teachers that are uh, facing teaching for the first time in a very special setting, and it's worth to say that it's um, it's about simulated classes. So today the topic will be focus on the first encounter with teaching for pre-service teachers in simulated classes, which is a whole a new deal and idea of helping them, but at the same time struggling with certain issues, and, uh, and, and that's why they're here. Yeah, and this is, a, we're really happy that they're here today too, because we want to take this opportunity to kind of explain and get some insight from, uh, from students from the BA to see how they feel, some experiences, share some maybe challenges that they've been facing. Uh, since we can all learn from, from those as well. I don't know if you girls want to start telling us a little bit and, and, and then I compliment if necessary, whatever, but I think you have a pretty clear picture of what is the beginning of the BA in first semester, classroom observation, and then getting into teaching workshop, which is simulated classes, short segments of classes. Can you explain us how the dynamic? Well, my experience, I dived in in class observation and it was for me, it was a little rushed because I came here and it was the first thing that I did. And it was really good in the matter of you can observe teachers in a different way as you might be that person in the front of the class one day. You stop seeing the class as a student and then you actually pay attention of how he or she are trying to control the class or how they are moving seats and things like that. Can you describe exactly what we did actually? Mm. We actually had this um, observation sheet and we came to the classes, asked permission firstly, and when the teacher gave us the permission to actually observe the class, we could be there and checking different topics or inputs. We 
we were given each week so we can see piece by piece what we're going to do next. All right, we were, we were discussing the essential things like teacher's movement, the use of the voice, uh, the singing arrangement, the interaction patterns, very general things in which we just covered the, def the general definition of the aspect and they would go and observe, having at the end uh, around 12, 13 observations yes. and, and, and during the whole semester. And then from there, yes, uh, yes. Yeah, so do, do you observe the same teacher throughout or do you observe different teachers? Different teachers different. for each topic. Yes. For each topic. Yes. And so that each observation is a different topic. So 13 topics. Yeah. 13, 13, 13, yeah. 13 yeah. teachers. Uh, a okay. little bit more of topics because some of them include two or more topics in the observation. But yes, it's starting from very simple, basic things like movements and position around the classroom and that's it. And just so to, to clarify, do they have, do the teachers that are being observed, are they taking turns basically cycling through different students or are they totally different teachers for all the students that are observing? Just Sometimes could be repeated by different students, but it was totally free. You could go mm -hmm. to anywhere you wanted okay. and just the only thing it was, you can repeat the same teacher in two observations. Okay. All right. All right. And then from there, we skip to the second semester, which is actually our, our topic today, uh, focusing on teach what we call in this BA at Autonoma Teaching Workshop, in which they simulate classes among themselves. But the focus of the classes start with uh, very specific and basic teaching uh, skills to develop. And we go through pretty much the same topics that classroom observation have. Uh, going through use of the voice, interaction patterns, movements in the classroom, standing position, and very, very basic things so they start to develop them as teachers, taking into account that it's the first encounter with uh, teaching, actually. And it's, it's uh, I don't know, Diana, can you explain a little bit what happens in this class with the whole dynamic? I'm sorry, right. uh, I'm sorry, just a quick question. How big is the class? Is it just one group? For all of you together, or are you separated into? Yeah, we are separate from fourteen. Three to teams. We have three. Three teams. Yes, okay. we are from fourteen to seven. Seventeen. Yeah. Students in yeah. each group. Yes. In each group. Okay, so it's a big group as yes. far as the whole yes. semester. Okay, so about fourteen then in your group. Yeah. Seventeen, seventeen, seventeen actually, right? Yes. With us, seventeen. Seventeen with you. Okay. All right. Okay. Sorry. Well, in first semester, I was like. Okay, I'm going to observe the teacher and that's it. But in second semester, I realized that that was my turn to be the teacher. And I was like, oh my God, what am I going to do? But then the first class, I was very nervous. I was like, I, I'm, I can do this. But I think in this class, we have developed different skills from teaching and for, for our students to make them, to help them understand different things or to apply what we observed in the first semester. Uh, this topic is mainly based on teaching. It's what are you going to do with your students, how you can help them, and... Can you talk about a little bit about how you plan that first, that first class? So you said you were a little bit nervous, but what, was, what did you do from this semester specifically to help prepare you get through that first class that you think looking back that helped me or maybe I should have done this differently uh, to be I guess uh, more calm for that first class for this semester? Well the first topic I chose was WA questions and I think it's an easy topic and I don't remember if I observed this class but I think it's look it's for for students in a I don't know basic, basic level and I took like some topics of the first semester, like use of voice, uh, movements, teachers' movements, and I applied these topics in my class, in my first, in my, in my very first class, because I think it's, uh, I, I already say, it's easy to start with these kinds of topics. Okay. And the nature of the activity is that we have an input session one specific topic and then they go in rounds in which every single member of the team presents a 15 minutes class that's the nature of it and that but it's a simulated class and that's precisely uh, pretty much the idea of establishing this this is the first encounter 
that are nervous, that are uh, that are things to 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 be concerned a little bit at the beginning from the students themselves. And that's exactly what I wanted to ask you. Uh, which are the aspects that really caused the, this first moment to be the way it was? I mean, different students have different degree of of stress because of this uh, of this first encounter. But it, in theory, it was the very first time in your life that you were actually teaching. Now, having this setting of a simulated class is teaching amongst amongst people you know, your classmates, but it they are not in the real level that you to teach so it's a simulated class 15 minutes what are the aspects that really cause certain uh, effect or affect in you in this first encounter of teaching well for me it was um the fact that it was with people that we know okay so i was really nervous of getting you know making myself embarrassed or or actually just uh, in my life in my personal life I've always had a, a best communication in English. So my classmates already had that little clue. And giving a class, I was so nervous that I was going to fail or they were going to think badly about me. Okay. So that made me very nervous. And I tried to make a class very, very simple, very uh, in my comfort zone. I went with weather and it was only like six uh, vocabulary items. And I, I, I think that the main thing that I did was repeating what all my teachers did when I was younger. I only made myself the main focus on the class and just made them repeat a couple times and that was it. Okay. So, so you were reflecting more on your prior experiences in, yeah. as a learner okay. in other classes? Yes. All right. um, before, because I have a lot of questions about, about your partners, um, but I'm right. curious because uh, Pity mentioned input sessions, and just to clarify for the audience, right. I want to try to make this as clear for those who aren't familiar with with the the way that some of the terminology right. and the way that we work here. Well, um, can you talk a little bit? I'm I'm still interested in the planning too, like how you interacted with your tutor, those input sessions, thinking about the topic. You mentioned some in your case, uh, Diana, that you were uh, recalling last semester a topic that wanted to use how, but if you could talk both of you a little bit about how you prepared with your tutor or PD in this case um, for that for that first class just to give the audience a, an idea about how the the relationship between the tutor and you the student teacher kind of come together before that first class and, and in subsequent classes mm -hmm. well firstly um, we had a course last semester there was like lesson planning so we had this prepare this preparation of how to fill a lesson plan, what was going to be the objective of the class, what was going to be the topic. We divided the the classes into warm up and then the main activities and then the closing. Having that, when we started this semester, um, Pity here uh, gave us the the lesson plan and actually gave us a little bit more information about how to feel it correctly, how to make more conscious decisions about the class. For example, the objective, most of us were actually making the activity and then the objective of the class. And he taught us like, we have to see the objective first, what you want your students to learn, what you want your students to reproduce, and then what activity is going to help you to get through that objective. Okay. It is worth it to say that the the specific topic of the uh, of the input sessions we have different input <coughs> sessions after each round, but before each round, it's given to the three teams, to the three different teams as together a whole group. as a whole group okay. as a fifth. So the something the students uh, right, and then uh, but in this case, this specific aspects uh, about the lesson planning at the beginning was given uh, to this section of the group, to my team specifically, because uh, every teacher works a little bit different in sense of uh, lesson planning and dynamics for checking and having this relationship with the students. And this is the moment in which they start to know me for the first time as an evaluator of what they are going to perform. And I say evaluator because it's something that I try to is but they, we will discuss about that later on with them. 
So pretty much that's what happened in that sense. Going a little bit back to, to what you mentioned, because it, it just caught my attention. Uh, one of the aspects, because that was the first question I, I, I focused on, uh, what is affecting this first encounter? And, and Celeste, you're mentioning about the idea of teaching to people you know having an impact on you. What about you, Dana? And the fact of teaching to your own classmates, how does that, how does that or did that at the beginning, at the very first encounter affect it? Well, I think there were, there were people who I already know, and I was like, I felt comfortable, but okay. at the same time, I was like, oh my God, what if I do something wrong? And they were like, no, what are you doing? Okay. That's not what a teacher do, does. And I was like, oh my God. But then I think they uh, were a good tool a good okay i don't know like they encourage you okay to, hey they give you like advices they you can yes you can improve this to your students okay. you can do this and you and it, that was a great great experience i felt it for me all right so at the very beginning because i sense you, it's kind of a common thing at the very beginning you're stressed because you're going to teach people you know and you're worried about what's going to happen and how i'm going to yeah. Mess it up. <laughs> yeah. All right, but uh, that feeling, how does that affect the class? Did you do something because of that feeling, or you just felt felt it and you let it like that? You, you let it like that. Well, actually, in my case, it did did something to me. I in my class, I forgot an activity, okay. an entire activity, and I entered the class, and then I sit down, and I thought. Oh man, I forgot an activity and a whole activity because I was so nervous to mess up that I forgot okay. an activity and I thought I can't do that. I'm going to be a teacher and I can't just forget activities. Okay. Yeah. Yes. I don't think so. Maybe it was like nervous, but that's that's what about in the planning part? When you were planning the class, did that affect the planning part? I wanted to make an activity that would catch students' attention, but then at the same time I didn't want it to be that complicated because I wanted to do something simple and just get over with it. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. In planning, do you think that stress because I'm going to teach my classmates affected in your plan? Maybe for the level, the okay. level that I choose. Okay. Maybe they know, I don't know, like they don't know how to perform okay. the level that I want. Maybe they are like All more right. advanced level. And I was expecting something, another answer or something different. Okay. How do you, um, how do you see, because now we're uh, towards the end of the semester, we're getting into towards the end of the semester. So you've had several now sessions, right, with your, with your, your students slash mm -hmm. classmates. classmates. Yes. And how have your classmates changed as students? Are, are they the same? Have they, because I, I also see this kind of as a learning curve or a learning opportunity to be students, to actually kind of anticipate or even role play as a student to help the, the student teacher try to come up with situations where that would help them in their activities. Can you talk a little bit about that, how you as a group now, as students, and thinking on the other side, mm -hmm. how has that changed over the semester, if it's changed? Uh, for the better, for the worse. How can, can you speak a little bit about that role that you play as students in this type of course? I think we try to help our classmates, not like doing like the real students, like doing anything else or something like that. We try to make them like comfortable with us. We act like act as real students. We do what they want to do, like instructions or something like you can you write on your notebook this one and like, you're okay. like right. doing that. All right. And I think uh, in the beginning we were all so nervous that we actually paid so close attention and we did everything that was expected of us and if somebody said I want you to be beginners and I want you to be kids we would get excited on games. But I think that now that we have advanced on the semester, I think we got loose of ourselves. And sometimes we struggle about 
somebody not paying attention, somebody not actually doing what you're asking them to. So I think that's actually more real than what it was in the beginning. Okay, or do what about just making mistakes? It's kind of a role play of making mistakes because you're all teachers, studying to be teachers. Mm -hmm. But did you see any uh, change in how quote unquote mistakes were, were being made? Well, uh, actually, not, yeah. in, in our course, we don't have roles. Sometimes other teachers do give roles to their students so they can practice on mistakes or problems that you would have if you were giving a real class. But us, we don't actually do that because we think we are fairly starting and we have we have that many stress and that, I don't know, we were so nervous about doing it that having actually a role, a part of everything else, I think we would be overwhelmed okay all right oh, okay in fact that, that's that that's a decision i made since the beginning of the course i i talked to them about not giving the roles uh not ex not exactly towards this reason but i i, I kind of uh, enjoy listening to the way you put it because uh I, I i go through it through another kind of uh of reasoning because of the roles but yes it does have to do with the idea of uh, having a first encounter in teaching and focusing on the aspects they need to focus in the semester, not going beyond to other things, uh, which I'm not against the, 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 the role thing, but it's just a decision I, I made about it and uh, and pretty much goes towards, towards that situation. So the course more is about them. Uh, it's not so much about recast or corrective feedback. Mm. Or, or, or corrective, is it, what do you mean corrective, well, towards, corrective feedback, towards the learner, they're learners? They're either not doing something right or they make a mistake or th they're doing something th where the teacher needs to provide feedback because I, I look at it in two ways, right? Mm -hmm. the, the teacher can mm -hmm. present something, yep. teach, yep. this is this, this and this, and then based on what the students provide, right. whether it's not paying attention or, right. they, or whatever it is, whether right. it's correct or not, Based on what they say, then the teacher comes back and gives some sort of feedback. So my question okay, is, yeah, since yeah. you're saying, if I understand you correctly, that you're not, the focus is not for them to role play to make mistakes. Exactly. The focus is not so, role playing. Right. So, but it actually happens. The thing is that it, okay, so it actually that, happens. That would be like, because maybe some, I don't know, maybe somebody does make a mistake. Right, say, right. Okay. So is the expectation for this course you as the teacher to do something say something do something about it or or is that or what if you can talk maybe about your experience yeah. about that like how does that fit okay, into yeah. the goals of your personal goals for this course the, and that's uh, right the right yeah that, yeah the thing is that here yeah. we're discussing uh yeah i understand the relationship but it's kind of a uh, different um view one is the idea of role playing and having roles inside the simulated class, right? right. right. Having the roles, they, at the beginning, maybe that's what we missed to say, at the beginning of their class, they give a profile of the plan, the profile of the group is suspected to be this, which can go from something easy that you are you guys and this is new, mm -hmm. or you are you guys and this is something we saw last class and this is practice. So something so easy or something a little bit more complex, like, like uh, your kids, and this is the second time we see this topic, and we are going to add vocabulary to it, and uh, and they start to to have a wider profile in that sense. Now the role thing is that in uh, in other teams, the teacher decided to assign simulated roles to students. You're going to be the student that always snacks about something. You're going to be the student that does it and does that. And that's what we are not actually doing. Uh, and one of the things is uh, well, mainly was my decision in that sense expecting that the this situation happen for themselves so that's one thing okay and the other is exactly what you mentioned yeah. right when it actually happens which it does right they don't need the role it does happen now they have to take action and that's what we reflect on afterwards when it really it's really happens. the difference between planned and unplanned or anticipated mm -hmm. or anticipated right. types anticipated of problems, or the problems. Situations. Exactly. so this class was focused more on uh, unanticipated like issues like, oh, that just emerged. It's part of it. Because if you're not going to role play, 
right? Now, you, you are actually going to teach something, present something, right. and have an approach for presenting, an approach in which we mostly focus on, focus on uh, communicative uh, uh, classes in which students actually participate, uh, and uh, and that's pretty much the uh, the idea. Okay. So let's focus on feedback. Uh, let's focus in, in the well. The thing is that it right. happens during the class. Okay. Whatever happens with the students, what actually happens then is when the teacher okay. comes and reacts to the situations, right. and some of them are expected and some of them are not. So maybe, maybe I, so my yeah. question is thinking about that type of uh, the feedback, right? So you you presented. Now students are doing something, and based on what they're doing, now you're going to do or do say something. something. Yeah, exactly. My question is, thinking about over the course of the semester so far, right, we're almost, we're, what, two-thirds, three-fourths of the way finished of the course. How have, do you feel like, you, do you have more confidence, less confidence? How do you feel about that aspect of, of your teaching, that feedback aspect of it, just for this first introductory course in, in teaching? Well, about the feedback, I we actually had an input about error correction. So we actually, in my case, I learned a lot of how to correct students and not in a role that was actually planned in the natural way of the errors that were happening in the class. Even when you were giving something that we would call simple, simple sometimes errors happen and they were natural. So we were taught how to correct them and actually that gave me more confidence about how to treat not only our students slash uh, partners but only but everyone that I was teaching mm -hmm. because they give you like this more specific way but also a kind way of saying okay this might not be okay mm -hmm. but you can do it in the way that it's supposed to be okay yes uh, well in my case I think we are turning to people that we already know. So it's like, no, you are wrong. But in the real life, we have to treat the students in a way that they can understand or we we have to be polite with them. Like, no, as Celeste said, no, this is not in the right way. You can do it in this way. Mm -hmm. And that is what we have improved during this Yes. Okay. Subject. Now, not not only focusing on on the correction, but uh, uh, maybe the idea goes towards the response from you to the spontaneous situations that occur in the classroom. What do you think about the tools you have now, or have you developed something? Do you feel different from the beginning to now to the way you react to the classroom situations that happen? Well, I think in every class we develop some no new skills, but okay. in the same time we have new challenges. For example, two classes ago, I had a, a mistake that I didn't really explain it correctly to my students what, what I was expecting from them. So they didn't do the activity correctly or how I was expecting them to be. And I got frustrated. And actually, you could tell that I was frustrated. And then looking back, I think I should have reacted that way. But it was my natural reaction, and that's something that I have to work on. And in this class, I tried to make sure I was explaining it right. And in the lesson plan, I was I was thinking, how am I going to explain this so they can actually know how am I, what, what am I expecting from them? All right, good. All right, good. Yeah, no. your tool in your tools to your reactions, the way you handle situations. Is there a change from the beginning to now, the end of the semester? Um, yes, because sometimes I plan to my class, like, I expect something from students, but then they do not say what I want. And I was like, okay, am I, am, I'm going to give, like, another example, and I'm going to explain again, I'm going to control the situation. It, that is not what I expect, but I can continue with it. Okay. Thinking back... If you compare like how you plan each of your classes, and then you compare that with what actually happens in class, more or less like right now, not so much at the beginning, but right now, your last few classes that you've done, how much of what you actually do was planned, and how much of it was unplanned, that just kind of came up, you weren't anticipating it, 
and you had to, to improvise, more or less, like a, a percentage, just to kind of get an idea. Does it do you have any? I think now in this fewer classes, uh, I think 70% is more planned, and 25% is something that came out to us, because I think, and I will speak from both of us now, uh, we planned, and in the beginning, we would have problems even with the time. We weren't okay. even sure how the students we were going to take, how much time reading, how much time writing. And now we have a more, more or less idea of how much they're going to take, how many people it is, and if they are participating between them, how many is going to be, and okay. things like that. Right. That's good. Yes. Bien. Yeah, um, another question. So I'm really curious about this, the, the partners, right? Your classmates being students. Um, can you think of a situation with real learners that, how, if, how would you compare that group of real learners, maybe their kids or does whatever you would say you feel more comfortable with as a, as, as a teacher right now, how would you compare that to this experience working with your, your fellow students, your classmates as students? Uh, is it, yeah, can you speak a little bit about the differences between those two hypothetical situations? Well, I think it's actually, in my opinion, one of the disadvantages of the teaching workshop because you can plan something and the disadvantage is that uh, maybe you plan something for beginners, but our classmates are advanced level, so they already know the topic. You can even plan that is a practice but they already have practiced a lot and they already know the, the topic and they know you. So they're trying to help you. And if they make a mistake, they will notice or maybe you, if something comes up and it surprises you, they might see your face and say like, oh man, no, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't have a problem. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. in a real class, that wouldn't happen. In a real class, right. kids maybe do have problems or somebody doesn't understand and you're trying to help them and they still have a problem. And I think that's something it's, they're not preparing us to. We have this false sense of security of they know the topic already. And right. even if it's something new, they have the level to understand it. Mm -hmm. So I think this is something. Right, and, and this point. is something that I can kind of corroborate. We had a se one of the sessions in which I assigned topics, which were higher level than what they used to choose. And that was a class in which they had more problems with, yeah. right? Be beginning with the topic itself, right? the understanding of the topic and the conceptualization of uh, the technical, theoretical part of the planning, right? Talking into advanced levels, the definition of the linguistic topic, the function <laughs> of the language and the context, which was presented completely for them. And then having uh, the need to go and look about a topic because maybe the teacher, him or herself, had problems with it. Right. And then coming and presenting, that was the one in which we had like more cases of conflict in the classroom. But, uh, well, I don't know how, how that worked for you guys. Remember that that case? Well, I'm going to say something related to All right. the yes. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. I think there is, in this subject, we have, as I already said, our classmates. But in the real life, we have real students. So if we are trying to teach something to these students, maybe we will have some, like, I don't know how to say, like, no problems, but like, how can I say? Mm. Barriers? Challenges or? Yes, challenges. Challenges. Challenges, yeah. challenges. In the learning, and the teaching. teaching process. Because maybe we are like, in this, subject we are like yes and we have this one this one and this one and they are like yes we have it mm -hmm. but in the real class maybe they get confused they can get confused right. like okay. and why these have to be like this right, right. They, like, they may ask you a question that right. you can't answer exactly like, now okay comparing right. comparing yeah. that to to the idea of uh, being your first encounter and developing basic skills uh, what is that that has the more weight? The development that you're having at whatever level you are developing or the interference that this may cause when you face a real group? 
Do you think it's more interference or it's more the, the learning that you are acquiring right now in the course? I think it's more the learning okay. that we're acquiring because, as I said, we don't have many problems because we have advanced right. students, okay. so that's something. But in the case, like you were saying, the, when they were giving topics to us, some topics were, well, most of them were advanced, and we are expected to be advanced levels. But in some topics, we had problems as students because we knew the topic, but we really haven't practiced it, practiced it that much, or we haven't even talked about it. We just knew how to talk, but we didn't know the, the name or the grammatical sentences. So we had a lot of troubles, and most of the teachers, including myself, had problems about not only explaining, but more students actually reacting to you. So I think that was the most, most right, real class that we gave. Right. right, so that's I see it as this, like, You've got two things. You present, right, and you give feedback. Right. And so that is really the question here right. is how do we uh, get used to, as student teachers, how right. do we learn to give feedback, to feel comfortable with giving feedback that first time, those first few, that first right, semester right. or whatever, with our classmates right. or with real students? How do we make that transition, right? Because even right. with our students, as we're talking about today, they may or may not give the feedback right. that maybe real students right. might give. And the only way to learn how to give that feedback is to have students force us to give that feedback, right? Because right. If, if there's no reason to give right. the feedback, we're not going to give the feedback. Right. Right. That seems to be, for me, the, the question, right? There's a lot of variables, too, because right. our, our student teachers, how do they feel with teaching children, maybe they don't like to, to right, teach yeah. children, yes, exactly. they want to teach adults, that's also a factor. And, right. um, but that's interesting, that that part, that feedback part, and what the and how much do you focus on that feedback getting from started students. and then from semester to from semester. semester, to semester. Yeah. Uh, which, where is, where you actually think you are grasping this new development, whatever you grasp, which is the skills, the knowledge, or, or maybe the input aspects, I don't know. Where exactly is where you think you make that connection? Like, yeah, this is something that now I know how to do it differently, or now I'm going to try this, and it's something that I'm going to keep, or, or, well, putting it into words, it's already giving you an idea of, of, of where I would think it happens, but the question is, where do you think actually the learning happens? In the feedback. I'd say okay. in the feedback, more than in the input, because in the input is more like a theoretical uh, right. topic. And then we practice, we try to apply it on the, in the lesson plan and then in the class. But then we actually make the class. And I think that's an advantage of the, the teaching workshop, because okay. you have this practice hand in hand with a person that already has a lot of practice and sees how you're doing in your class, mm -hmm. sees the little parts that you might miss. And then we sit down and they tell you, well, maybe you could do better in this part. You fail in this part and you have a lot of to make improvements, but you also have what you've worked and what you can do better or what you can use again. And when you decide to do to apply something or say, or, or, or for example, something and thing is that you finish the class, the class is over and then we go through a, a feedback session about what happened in the class and and this uh, back and forth of your opinions and maybe somebody else's opinions in the students and, and the observer, we have an observer there, and the tutor. Okay, but that's like the talk and the feedback and maybe you take notes or ev everybody takes it differently. But when actually happens that you bring it to the next class or maybe in two class, I don't know, when that really happens. Or maybe an, an example of this awareness, this where it clicked, where yeah, exactly. or, that's over the time, point, the click it's like, part. oh, I don't do that anymore. I, I learned All right, thing. exactly. What is that? Can you share like a, a, an experience, like when it happened and what, what it was? Maybe I had a feedback in, related to instructions, like my instructions, my instructions were too long and my students maybe um, can not understand everything in one, like in mm -hmm. one mission. And in the next class, <clears throat> I tried to make the instructions easier, easier for them. So I didn't 
tell them the instructions. I just ask one participant and I explain the instructions of like just the students, the student and me. And I was like, everybody, are you, uh, everybody's paying attention. And it was like, so are, is it clear well what we're going to do? And they were like, yes, but I didn't like tell the instruction like, so first we're going to do this and then we're going to know. I try to make easier for my students to get instructions. Since the planning for that class. Yes. All right. Now, I want to, okay. Go, I just want to clarify go, yes. again yes. for the, the audience right. who may not be familiar with this, just to clarify, you have a, a session with your uh, tutor face-to-face, -face, correct? Uh, or you with Oh, you? before, yeah. yeah. Be, yes. We have and a session then, with the whole group for input. Okay, and then they schedule their class. And, and then how soon after the class do you receive follow-up feedback? Or do you? Right away. Right away, like the next day? or No, right away after the class. After the class. Oh, right after the class. Right after the class. Okay, we have so a face-to-face -face -face conference. Face-to-face, -face, face -face -face, uh, uh, like a folk, like, special, like, like a kind of uh, an intervention. <laughs> okay. We have the yeah. teacher and the okay. students and right. the observer okay. and the tutor. Yeah, just to clarify, because that may right. not be... Uh, and, and they also have, uh, have to hand in the lesson plan before the class. And uh, I think all of them come and approach and we discuss the topic sometimes without the lesson plan there but the whole idea and we yeah. have like a like a pre pre-class feedback session but that's that that has happened only uh tutor students now the question is have you had this pre-class discussions with other classmates yes actually i i i sometimes come to my twitter who is speeding. Yeah. And I sometimes ask my classmates that maybe they're not even in the class of PD. I have an idea and I have my topic and I have my objective. And I ask them, I have maybe these three activities. What do you think is the most appropriate? Or you as a student, what do you would feel more interested in? And then sometimes I ask PD, what would be better for my objective? Is this too destructive or maybe it's not going to go with my objective or maybe I'm losing the, mm -hmm. the importance of the exposure? Okay. I'm really interested in reflection in action where when you're in the moment, you're teaching your class, you're becoming aware that you, like you shared, you had an something experience, happened. something happened. I'm wondering with those follow-up conferences or interventions with uh, your tutor, PD, after the class, if there are some things that you would come to PD to say, oh, you know, I, I missed this, I know, before you even tell me, I know I did this and this and this. Can you, looking back from like the first day of class versus now, do you feel that you're able to reflect a little bit more in action where you kind of can detect those moments? Or, or is it pretty much, has it been the same uh, so far this semester? I think we've improved a lot in that sense. Because in the beginning, I uh, we present the class and then we reflect ourselves what we would change about our class or what we think is good or what we think is wrong. And then we go to the feedback with the or a small group. Then the tutor give us feedback and the student and you give your ideas of what you think it was wrong in your class and at the beginning all the teachers were like um well i was nervous mm -hmm. and that was our reflection uh, i was nervous yeah. and now we sit down and even if, if the tutor hasn't said anything we say i know i should have given the instructions a little bit more quicker or i know i should have done this or maybe i talked a lot or maybe mm -hmm. i did this and sometimes our tutor is is uh, agreeing with us, or sometimes it's like you're being a little too harsh on yourself. Maybe you need to let it go. You do have mm -hmm. to improve, but you're going to be too harsh on yourself if you keep doing this. Right. Okay. Okay. Good. Now there's a reason why uh, I invited Celeste, and there's a reason why I invited Diana. And I want to start with Celeste. Uh, Celeste had uh, she talked about that specific experience in which she felt really frustrated and it's something that came to affect the class the first thing is uh the moment of development in which celeste is which is the first encounter with classes now uh, it's not expected expected that she can handle all of the situation or many of the hard situations on one side so we could discuss about that if, if you want to ben 
or if you want to curse, but I want to focus more on the idea of the interference of the language in a teacher's performance. Okay, because just... because what there's the comment was about the language itself. Students are struggling with language issues Let while me see if learning I understand. about class. Let me see if I understand so about teaching your frustration. Class. Your frustration is if you, your students were you were you were frustrated that your students were making mistakes mm -hmm. and that you couldn't inter you couldn't intervene. Oh, uh, it was she understand. was she was teaching a topic right in which you, in, in which. Uh, the problem was not the topic itself. Was oh, it many it that different? many other aspects of the language were interfering? It was in a her. different. It was exactly. not the focus. It was not the focus of the lesson. Of the lesson. Exactly. Other, okay. And That's then her important. frustration was based that on what? Based, what to do? I don't know. Well, I'm talking well, about her. Maybe okay. you can tell us. Well, explain that better. We can I, all learn from this. exactly and that's that's the two as, as, as teachers and service teachers, your classmates. So we're all here under the the best of intentions. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and I told them, okay, if you have problems with the adjective, you can change it to a synonym, and do the. Mm -hmm. It was going to be a cherry. Mm -hmm. Do the cherry. I had the the formula of the sentences that I want them to give me. Mm -hmm. Paste it on a wall chart. Mm -hmm. One team was struggling a lot, and the other team was struggling too. But I missed the point of where one team, I guess, it didn't understand the what I was expecting from them, and they just did whatever they wanted to. Mm -hmm. And the other team was struggling and struggling. And I thought, okay, well, if you're struggling with the adjective, change it. If you don't know the adjective at all, change it. And they were still struggling. What happens when you plan? On some, because this is going to happen. It happens to us all yeah, the that's time. It is happens to every single teacher. We have this pre, even if throughout the semester we think we know the students, we go in with something new, and guess what? Zero, nothing, nada. They're lost. It's, it's a learning lost. opportunity exactly. to, say, to reflect and just say, okay, because you did this a little bit. You tried it back pedal or back, you know, try to go back and say, okay, something a little bit easier, something more easier. Right. Or easier. And then there has to come a time where, let's say, okay, the adjectives in the ED form, ING form, okay, we're going to talk about adjectives only, right? Or just keep going back go. and back and back until you go back exactly. to the very, very, but, very... But big. that's the point. We were discussing a moment ago how uh, when we go to feedback and the teacher himself or herself is telling us things that they realize, but they didn't correct at the moment because they need a little bit more of... Uh, more time to react, right, right. because and that's just a matter of practice. Yeah, it and is. it's I think maybe it's the same situation that happened here. Now that's that's the angle of the teaching part exactly. The the tools that you had at that moment, or the experience in the use of the tools. <laughs> it came a moment and it was too, it was too overwhelming for her, and no movement point. Right? The big question is. Now looking back, right? What exactly. could you yeah. have, or should you have done? I think I should have, and I thought this with pity. I should have prepared uh, adjectives. I like had a backup plan. Mm -hmm. If I had seen that I had the problem of adjectives, I could see. Okay, you're having problems with adjectives. We're going to see adjectives, mm -hmm. and we're going to check them, and then we're going to see this topic. And in that moment, I was so overwhelmed that I didn't thought about it and I did make the mistake of assuming they already knew it and or, I didn't really prepare it. Yeah, or flip it around and start with the adjectives first. Yes. And, and then, then, because you can kind of, it's like putting the feelers out, you put the fish and pull out and right. see if anybody bites. Mm -hmm. Right? So if they if they know what adjectives are, it's like, okay, now we're going to take it a step further or whatever and if not, that's another way. That's good. Mm -hmm. Now, I, w I just want to remind our audience uh, to join us and follow us uh, look for us, Teacher Learning Cast, in Facebook. You can uh, search like that, Teacher Learning Cast. You can Google Teacher Learning Cast Benjamin Stewart or Te Teacher Learning Cast Piri Herrera, and you will get all of our uh, websites and services where you can see us and you can explore whatever we have there. We're always looking for people to interview as well. So if you want to be a part of the broadcast, again, reach out to us. Facebook probably is the easiest way. Uh, so feel free to let us know, and uh, we'd be more than happy to bring more teachers, more educators into the conversation in our live broadcast. But uh, as always, leave comments, let us know, give us feedback. It's all good. Uh, we appreciate any feedback that you can.
can share and also share your experiences based on some of the topics. If there's some topics that you want to hear more about, also let us know and we'll be happy to take those on in future episodes. Okay, now uh, there's a reason why I invited Diana and uh, uh, I think uh, Diana, well both of them, they, they have a natural uh, sense of, of grasping things very fastly. They have a natural way of, of performing two certain things. In the case of Diana, it, and she already mentioned this before, like the way she started giving instructions, just instructions for, for an activity, is not the way she's doing it now, but it's the same thing that it has happened in uh, giving instruction. When presenting the topic, it was a totally, uh, well, not a totally different way, but right now I, I have one video that uh, we're going to share with you because Diana already granted us permission to do that, in which is uh, having a, a grammar explanation of a couple of, of uh, words in, in the grammar use. But this explanation is based totally in a different approach than the one she used at the beginning, which is her as a teacher presenting all information for students. And that's why I wanted to invite her to tell us uh, how do you think, uh, well, first, she already mentioned it before, she realizes about this change in, in, in her style, in, in the way she's doing it. Do you have an idea how do you accomplish getting to the point in which you have this transformation? Maybe because of the feedback. Okay. And I don't know, I'm just like, I always remember in each class the last feedback. Mm -hmm. So what can I do in this class? What else? Uh, this is not this is not gonna work. This is gonna work, and like oh. different points All right. for one class. Now, what ha what actually you can see the video later on. We're gonna share it with you. And uh, what happens here is that whether uh, the the level of a perfect class or or a class with a lot of uh, need of improvement that's like a topic aside but the point is the the explanation and the way she carries the students and she makes students tag along in in her grammar presentation and her grammar feature and uh, my question is uh, did you actually plan the way to can you explain us how you decided to do that or explain what you actually did in that one do you remember the class it's the last one yes well in the last class i used the school supplies Okay. For vocabulary, I separate the vocabulary. Uh, it was singular and plural, and I use object pronouns. So I think I planned that class like for people from fifteen to seventeen years old. So I think this is easier because they are familiar with the vocabulary supplies, okay. like scissors, glue, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Then I choose subject pronouns because it was an easy way to explain that kind of grammar structure. Okay. It for singulars and then for plural. But in the explanation, I actually I was thinking like I'm going to give the explanation. Like, this is for singular, this is for plural and stuff. Mm -hmm. But in that moment in the class, I I thought why students uh, don't help me? Why don't students help me? And it was like, so here we have, and everybody singular, and here we have plural. And then, so we use uh, it for, and everybody singular mm -hmm. objects, and them for plural objects. So I didn't realize that I did that since. Until uh, the feedback, until the feedback, okay. right? Until the feedback. And, and it's a combination of things because uh, she managed to do this. Yes, it, it may be the influence that the students already handled the language, but the material she prepared for the class and the way she presented on the board and taking it a step by step made the students, I even asked the students, do you think this would have worked for somebody that is looking at this for the first time? And, and we all agree that it would totally have worked because all of this combination now, my, my, and that's the reason why I invited Diana, because uh, how do you go from me being the protagonist of, of, of the class to have these decisions, and now that she mentions that, in the moment of the class, 
All right, how do you manage to get to that? I mean, I, I see, and I'm happy to see that, because there's a process, and, and not because, uh, I mean, something is working out. But the question is, what? Which aspects? When? Yeah, when you made that. When you really, made that. When did you make when, that realization? When did you make that realization? Yeah. Was it in the moment, like in the class? In the or was it something you thought, okay, I'm going to do something different, but like you thought about before the class? Okay. It was... Uh, first, it was uh, before the class. Okay. I was okay. like, I'm going to do something different. But then I was like, even my class, everything this, 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 and then it was like. Oh, then it clicked. Yeah. Okay. okay. It clicked. So why well, I need to to use this, and I started to use it, and I was like, students, now you, then me, and then you, me, you, me, because we are a group. I'm not like only the teacher. I'm the teacher. Just. You do this. You do this. No, we are a group, a uh -huh. complete group. And if you don't understand, some, if you don't understand something, here I am. Uh, what do you need? What can I help? What I, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I think like in my previous, in my previous experience, I was like, my classes were like, oh, the teacher is talking and talking, and it was not like bad, but I don't know. I'm more like active like so they were more engaged so yes. the students were more right. so i engaged. i thought well i'm going to do this class in the way i would like to to receive the class right that's a, that's an important that's a comment, good right? right because earlier i think one of you mentioned something like well i was teaching like how i remember as i a remember student. as a student yes now we flipped over to i'm teaching like how i would want to be that's taught right. at that moment maybe it's different than how i was being taught before right. but um, now it's a, it's the same situation with Celeste. she she's doing these kind of things also uh the difference in here is that the moments in which this clicked and the changes were in different moments different situations yeah. and in different stages uh, 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 during the semester now i want to clarify that we're talking about practice we're talking about the first encounter with teaching but we're talking about six classes only mm -hmm. All right. This is the six. We're talking about six classes. Size. It's a small sample yeah. size, but it's six classes only, and um, and this talk makes me realize that we are actually working on the focus of the class, which is yeah. the reflection part, the reflective part, and the adaptation of whatever we can share it amongst us because as i always tell them like there's no exact formula i mean we can explore all of this information if you want to but there's not exact formula to get into a group and uh it's going to work this way you have to learn little by little to make it easier and faster so when you get to the classroom and you realize about this and that you make that, those decisions the key take takeaway for me on this conversation right. i really again appreciate both of you sharing right. your experiences um but the key idea for me, the key takeaway, and we've talked a little bit about this in other uh, episodes, right. is as teacher trainers, we immediately think the focus is on us. But we have to step back and say, okay, what are my students doing? And I think in both of your situations, we you've come to that realization, whether for better or for worse, and say, oh, okay, it's about them. Mm -hmm. I mean, we are important. You know, We have a place. We have a role. But it's about what they do or not do. Or they're not doing and that makes all the difference so I think that change in perspective is I think so important and it's something that you can't teach it's like you have to go through those those moments right and you have to kind of live that experience and say oh and then one day it says okay it's, it's what they're doing I realize now they're more engaged and then that and then that changes your whole perspective as a teacher like that changes whole everything else as you both uh, explain uh, nicely so I think yeah. I think that's great. Right. And, and uh, I think there are many details and things and gaps that, that, that we live today because uh, we are living the experience, but the audience itself, or that you guys may, may not um, be that familiar on. You may have a lot of questions about what we are discussing yeah. right now. But the point is this, uh, uh, the girls are teachers in pre-service teachers in formation where are actually experiencing, experiencing for the first time teaching actual teaching and the class the classes are simulated are just a couple of uh, activities that they perform in 15 minutes and uh, and we have all these discussions and we have a lot of material to do and uh, the question 
the, the bottom line of all of this analysis and many things we can discuss and many topics we can bring, tell us what you want to talk about uh, if you want us to rescue something uh, from, from this conversation. My point in here is it's a simulated class. And I bring as example the role thing. Do we assign roles? Do we not assign roles? How much simulated can it be? Uh, how, how real it is when it comes to they cannot do it, the language. Uh, do we need yeah. to assign roles when they have mistakes or not? Well, all of these topics are around. But the point is, how much is this simulated class helping you as the first encounter with teaching? What is your opinion about that? I think this is the first, not the first, the first one, but it's like a general view of what we want to do as teachers. Mm -hmm. This is like what we can do or we can we can't do with our students okay. for example if in the future we are teachers i hope it's like uh in many situations oh i remember that i gave a class mm -hmm. in teaching workshop and this strategy can help me right now okay. so this is like the beginning like the introduction mm -hmm. to all the teaching work. Celeste? I, I agree totally with, with Diana and I do think the bottom line for me is to learn what you want to do and how you feel comfortable as you said to find out which, which level do you feel more comfortable with even if the students aren't really that level but gives you an idea of what activity do you like most or what you can bring to make yourself comfortable giving that class mm -hmm. shaping your teacher's character right yeah. Uh, yeah anything else girls i know so let's you have some information and maybe you have discussed some of the things along in one way or another but if anything you want to add i mean we do have the time to share it and and, and, and put it so tell us well i one thing that i rescued through the semester is that when when I start planning the classes, my first class, I plan everything myself. I didn't ask for help. I didn't ask for advices or anything. I just plan it myself. And then little by little, I learned that it's okay to actually, if you can really get the grasp of what you want to do as an activity, you can actually look it online and, I don't know, get a sense of what you want or get inspired by somebody else's work or somebody else's class or ask for your student or how they fell in the class or how it, your teachers would do it mm -hmm. because at uh, the beginning I felt like I'm going to be the teacher I don't need people to tell me what is going to happen and then I realized it's okay to ask for help it's okay to Mm, ask questions. How do you feel with my class okay. and to sense the waters? Mm -hmm. um, I think I noticed like a pro progress. I remember my first class and I was like, what am I doing here? <laughs> but now I really enjoy my classes where the last class I really, really enjoy class because it was like a, as Fury told me, it was like a part class. First this and then this, but everything was like complete. Like mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So I think we have learned a lot, and we are going to learn more things. But I, I feel very comfortable now, right now. Yes. We have a lot of information, and and obviously, uh, as always, this is uh, this is one example of what it, what we are doing, how we're doing it. And obviously, there's, there are different ways to do it. There are different thoughts about it. There are different angles, opinions. and uh, But pretty much, I, I like the idea of learning, which is uh, something I have as a note. Uh, and, and I think you girls mentioned that in, in the article question. We are in, in a process of learning. Absolutely. And it's important to understand that it's the first encounter with teaching. And, uh, and, it's, and it's very important for me to see that the group, as a general, has a very high level of development from the beginning to this point in the way the class was handled during this, this semester. And uh, yes, of course, there are things to, to learn and develop and, and they will need to go through other tutors and other styles and think about others' perspectives so, so they can build a complete view of 
of what they want as a base character as teachers. Uh, but yes, this is the beginning. I think I think you're gonna put it in, in uh, well, you girls put it in, in, in good words by saying this uh, that this is the beginning. This is uh, the we are in the process of learning. We all, <laughs> all of us, right? all teachers, of us, teachers are, yeah. are learners, and that's yeah, precisely why we do As teacher we podcast before, right? is to share stories exactly like this, right? So that we can learn from each other right. and share those stories. So. If you're watching and you're watching this recording later on, again, feel free to leave comments, leave feedback. If we need further clarification, because we we try to explain the context uh, of uh, the courses that, that we teach here at the university, uh, but feel free to, to inquire. Let us know if you want more information about uh, any aspect of, of the VA. Be more than happy to clarify that. So right. again, girls, thank you very much. Thank you, girls, for accepting the invitation. We are really it. glad to have you. You are the second guest. Yes. This show, chapter number five, we had a uh, flipped learning with yeah. Ken Bauer, yeah. and today we have uh, teacher's information, first encounter with teaching in simulated classes. Very good. Well, I guess that will That's conclude that today's broadcast. Again, we'll be uh, broadcasting the recording on Saturday, uh, and we want to thank everyone for uh, watching. And again, feel free to reach out to us if you want to be a part of the, uh, the conversation, if you want to be a part of the live broadcast, let us know and leave feedback. So again, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.